Hi guys and welcome to my channel. So today we're going to go back into the classic 10 year uh, anniversary sort of thing that I do every month for you. For those of you who aren't sort of familiar, essentially I make us feel really really old um, by looking back at something that was released back in 2007 this month. I uh, looking through last night and I thought, hey why not? And it's actually been a 10 years to the day the Colours by Between the Buried and Me was released. I honestly think it could be one of the most important albums of the last 10 years. Um, Between the Buried and Me, since they released this, kind of went off to become, I would say, probably one of the biggest modern progressive metal bands there are. So, you know, like, afterwards they released The Great Misdirect, then The Parallax EP, then The Parallax 2, which led right up to Coma Ecliptic, which is potentially one of their finest moments so far, where I think they see all of the elements that were in colours kind of come together in the most mature sort of product really. Colours is where it all started off and it's eight tracks from the moment that Foamborn A, I still get the chills man when I hear that piano where it's like dun, 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 dun. and then it leads right up to the end of White Walls after that White Walls bit um, and it finishes with the same notes and it's, it's absolutely genius. And they've also got you know recurring harmonies throughout. I think it comes back in on Son of Nothing, Ants of the Sky, and stuff like that. But, you know, it was such an architectural album in kind of creating the modern prog world. Like, for example, you know, The Contortionists are massively influenced by Between the Buried and Me. Then you've got Protest the Hero, um, I would say Scale the Summit as well, Animals as Leaders, maybe even Periphery. Um, who else is there? A Hero of Fake as well, which was a Victory Records signing, which was kind of like a metalcore rip-off of this band. Colours is, front to back, one of the best progressive metal albums ever created. A lot of people argue that it is their highest point, and I know that the band are embarking on a 10th anniversary celebratory tour, taking out the Contortionist and Polyphia with them, coincidentally. And I think it was when Between the Buried and Me went from just another band to actually being real visionaries of their genre. You know, like, of course they kind of incorporated the, the screaming vocals and everything like that, and they had it really heavy, but there was this beginning of prog that people hadn't really seen before, I don't think. You know, like, because prog before was, you know, Rush, you know, Genesis, Dream Theatre, all this sort of stuff. And slowly but surely it was kind of like, amalgamating that into what was mid-2000s metalcore and I think that's largely responsible for the reason why Colours sounds the way that it is and it kind of it took on this whole new identity for prog metal really um, especially from the states because I think you know like all those bands I just reeled off are pretty much all from the states. Each track on the record has its own redeeming sort of values. Like for example, Viridian's got that amazing bass interlude where it's just like and prequel to the sequel has that sort of it always reminds me of a bit of a superhero. You know, it's like and it's got that yeah, I don't know, maybe it's because it's all major key and stuff like that. But yeah, Informal Gluttony, Son of Nothing, Out of the Sky, those three are just like bum bum bum. And despite them being, you know, about 10 minutes long, it doesn't feel like that. And then you finally get to the end of the record with White Walls. And it's like this massive culmination of this huge journey. And I think it's rightfully called Colours because it kind of, it paints so many different colours. I'm getting really like nerdy and metaphorical here. But it does, it paints so many different colours of what progressive metal could be. It moved from from what was kind of mainstream metalcore, and you know, because a lot of people say that the early stuff of Between the Buried and Me, like Silent Circus and things like that, is more metalcore, and then they went into this uh, prog, prog direction, sorry. And, you know, it turns out that Colours that year was Mike Portnoy's favourite album. I mean, you know, <laughs> what more could you say? And I think the world was kind of stunned by this this arrival of 
of this new sound and I think a lot of people didn't really know how to handle it which a lot of the time is what happens when you've got someone who is so pioneering and I know that Between the Buried and Me are currently working on their new album now and I'm just as excited now as I am for the new material as I was when, when Colours came out. Got it. I'm, I'm going to try and hunt down a 10th anniversary reissue of the vinyl so if you guys know of anyone that would be able to send one because I'm here in the UK and I think it's only an American exclusive please let me know because I really want to get one um, yeah make sure you give it a listen at least today if not for the rest of the week yeah and also you know one of the biggest things I think is Paul Wagoner's guitar and Dusty Waring's rhythm guitar you know you've got all this sort of lead guitar acrobatics going on whilst it's anchored with this great rhythmic background and I don't think anything like that had really kind of happened. Obviously you've got like Cynic and Death and all this sort of stuff, but the, the metalcore aspect of it was totally different. And I think that's a massive game changer. And it's something that has now become part of Between the Buried and Me's DNA, which I think is absolutely essential. So if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and uh, subscribe. And again, as, as I always say, please keep commenting because I love chatting with you guys. Um, and I like to hear your opinions and all sorts of stuff. Peace. Thanks for watching.